I believe, Gora, to answer you that not a lot of fintechs will survive now what's happening. It's like uh, you really, you really, the users were getting so small revenues from the users that we need to, to, to build massive, massive uh, user, user. And this is why it's not only about just having an app, it's about having users, about having you, the user using the app, not only just uh, onboarding, uh, using the app, because it's about the product. I'm using it every day. It's about uh, loading. And this is what we're assisting now. Hi, Marwan. Hi, Gaurav. Hey, how's it going? Very Hi, good. Hi, Gaurav. Hey, brother. It's another nice sunny day in Dubai. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> hot day. Marwan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Renat. Thank you. Hello, all, and thank you also. Maybe you could kick us off by telling us a little bit about the founding story uh, behind uh, behind Yap. It was 2018, I believe, when you set up Yap. Um, tell us a little bit about the the genesis, the um, the journey you took to get to that stage to set up Yap. Okay, so uh, first, I've been I've been I've been working in the payment industry for the last uh, practically twenty years. I used to be based in Paris, and uh, in two thousand fifteen, uh, we bought fifty uh, percent of a startup in UAE, uh, C three card, which is payroll cards, and uh, we, we I worked as CEO in C three for three years, two thousand fifteen and two thousand eighteen. We reached one point eight million users. And uh, we had a, we we built an app for remittance, so it's a very successful story. And I worked a lot before in Africa, in Middle East, also was CEO of many companies for Ethernet Group. So so at the beginning, we're coming from the payment industry. Building a fintech today is very complicated because there are a lot of stakeholders: uh, issuer, the banks, the processor. Uh, the program manager or a fintech like us anyway to manage all the stakeholders. So the, the, it's, it's very complicated. And uh, I was only thinking that you have the banks, you have the traditional banks, and we, we always use apps or we use the web. We want to transfer money. We use one bank maybe. We want to pay our bills when we use another bank. We want to create, sub we want to create an account or give our cards to, to our kids. We use maybe another bank or another another player. So I, I, I wanted to gather all that to make our life easier already in UAE and in the region. How can we build an app where we can have everything in one app, having a super app? And this is what, where it started, how can we build that? So the idea was like in one-stop shop where you keep your bank account or you create a new bank account and you have one-stop shop app where you have the analytics where you have all these multi-currency because we, we want to have multi-currency. It's very complicated. You, you have to go to another bank to create a sub-account or you want to transfer money. Well, some banks, they have uh, a good user experience. Some are complicated. So this is the idea came from that. And same time also, you know, we in UAE, we all have people working with us, sometimes a driver, sometimes a maid is just coming to clean. So you have to pay them. You have to go withdraw cash. Then they want to buy something. You have to, to practically go withdraw cash and give, give it to them. So the idea is like, how can I pay their salaries or their expenses also digitally? And this is where we decided to create YAP as B2C at the beginning. In a way, adding all these features in one app. And this is what we're building. Second is like for the B2B also, because we were building a platform now, B2C, B2B. You know, also in UAE to open a bank account, they take it so complicated, especially for SME or a new co coming from abroad. It's really, it takes sometimes two months, three months, four months. So we, we tied up also here with the bank, EDB, where we're providing IBANs. We're activating the accounts in 48 hours. And uh, for new newcomers, new companies, in a way that can directly create a bank account to use it. So the idea came came from there, and this is where we started in 2018. Uh, I think I was watching also. I was really watching Revolut, watching uh, N26. I used to live in France also. I have my house in France also. So at the beginning, when I saw N26 Revolut, I, it's impressive that they were starting. I was watching the, how they're moving, how they're expanding, and uh, and this is how it is. So, so the rise of fintech, uh, fintechs uh, in Europe, in US was really 
very, very, very fast. And in our region, I will, we start said we need to build something for UAE, for KSA, for KSA, for the region, Middle East, Africa, especially. And we started them in UAE. Mm. And talk a little bit about the journey and experience of building the entrepreneurial journey of building a new business. How much experience have you had before in building new businesses? I know you've had a lot of experience in the industry, but what's it like to set something up on, you know, on your own with obviously colleagues and co-founders and funders and so on, but talk a little bit about that journey. Yeah, so I have a lot of experience, but I keep learning every day, you know, <laughs> it's like, again, I'm an investor in separate many companies and same time, I worked uh, for many years uh, with a big company who went to stock market also, I was there when they moved, when they went to stock market, so I have experience, but I learned a lot from Yab, I learned much more <laughs> from Yab, because first you have to raise money, which is very complicated when you have only a deck, then you have to build your team, uh, uh, building a, the proper team to take a company uh, very successful. You have to build your brands and uh, you have to build the tech. So you have to have really uh, a good team around the tech, the marketing. So, so it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's really, you learn a lot, you keep learning. You cannot, you cannot just say someone, you know, building, you have to learn, you have to, to, to execute yourself, to keep, uh, you know, to, 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 to build a company like that. So it's it's a journey. It's a journey, uh, and I wish I can I can describe everything for others not to do our mistakes because we did mistakes. We did some mistakes, but in same time we built a brand now and we're moving ahead uh, to to be to be one of the first I would say first regional player, uh, Middle East, Africa, and uh, and uh, South Asia. So. Uh, uh, from day one, from day one, uh, yeah, when we built it, we knew where we we're going. We had the vision where we were going. It's not like we didn't know where we we're going. From day one, we said, like I, like I said, you know, they have big player in, in Europe. Uh, I consider today uh, Revolut is a big player in Europe. You have a local, a lot of local initiative like N26, mm. Monzo, you have in US Shine, you have New Bank in, in, uh, in uh, South America. So. In our region, there is a lot of local initiative, successful stories as fintechs, every country, but there is no uh, one uh, regional player. And yeah, from day one, we want to be the regional player. So we have uh, the holding in the IFC where we're investing in the tech and the branding, having a big, proper brand, having a brand attractive. It's very, it's very, it's very and then building our product roadmap. So it's about branding, about product, it's about making making uh, the, the the company very successful you have to succeed everywhere so uh, and we have local entities yap ksa yap ue yap pakistan now we have ghana where we have a manager a ceo in every entity and the ceo has a full team so they are responsible of uh, practically of the customer service of the user acquisition and we have tech, scalable tech i will not say scalable brand but we have unified brand but we customize locally uh, the needs or local user experience. So you mentioned Revolut a few times in this conversation already and others like N26 and Monzo. And when you were building Yap, who were like the kind of fintechs or founders you were looking at going, these are really good role models. Um, it doesn't have to be the current generation, but where do you get your inspiration from? And then how much did you need to localize or adapt it? for the UAE market, for Saudi, for Pakistan. So talk a little bit yeah. about sort of the inspiration. Yeah. So, so, so first I mentioned other players because I like success stories. So we are not shy to benchmark success stories. So I always say to my team, you know, always uh, we're mm -hmm. not creating the wheel, but at the same time we are here. We're not the first player in the worldwide. So it was always check the successful stories and benchmark them and localize our needs here. So that's why I mentioned them because we will have. So now uh, in our region, also there is specific needs. Like I said, uh, what we did uh, in our product roadmap, we said there is a basic in a way we allocate, we, we provide IBANs, we provide the IBANs to our users directly. We don't want to be a wallet. We want to be really a digital banking app. We're providing IBANs, we're providing cards, debit card, virtual card, prepaid card, tomorrow maybe credit cards. And in the same time, I think, how we localize, we localize, we invest so much in the user experience and the UI, 
and how we localize it. What are what are our needs here? Okay, we have Yap Young. This is a need worldwide, where everybody wants to have a card or an account for their kids. You know, below eighteen, below eighteen, you need to create. Uh, you need to you always give them your your card. They want their own card. They want their own platform. So build, we build Yap Young, where we start. Uh, educating our kids on the financial inclusion, start educating them on how to save money, how to earn money. So it's very difficult uh, uh, platform. We also, like I said, localize in our region, especially here in UKSA, we'll have people coming working with us, helping us in the house. Uh, like I said, it's like we, we localize it that we can create sub account to them, having their own bank account, having their, their own platform, their own cards, transferring money easily home back home, which is a need here and not easy for them to open to, 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 to have a bank account. So we did this exactly with experience on, on that. And, you know, we, we localize in these things and we keep adding tomorrow in Africa, we might have a product for farmers. So now we have platform. We're able to produce our tech is like scalable in a way we're, we're creating a machine uh, in a way to be able to, to, pro, to, to, to add product, to innovate, to continue, innovate, to continue the development. And we localize some product uh, usually we try to add that product to be to be scalable, to be product worldwide because very, very difficult to 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 add platform. But we have also in the same time we 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 were happy to to connect with other fintechs, we to connect with other players. So we're we're getting now a financial marketplace where we're tying up with the apps to trade equities, where trade equities, digital digital assets where the regulation allow us uh, fixed income. NFT, so the NFT, so more. So we don't want to build this platform. We're aggregating to them. In the same time, also as a user of Yap, also we're creating a, a hub where you can start buying your airline tickets. Uh, but for sure, we'll connect with booking or other players or insurance or anything. And this is where we're introducing BNPL. In a way, you can you at any moment in the app tomorrow, you you reach a shop, you want to buy something, you need some 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 finance, you can you can drive directly because we have your data, we have your algorithm working. You can we can you can give you loans or we can give you uh, loans for three months, for six months, any any use, even tomorrow remittance also. We are also focusing on some countries where UAE K states outbound, uh, Pakistan, Ghana. Uh, Egypt tomorrow, it's inbound for remittance, where tomorrow we will do doing in a way where you are practically uh, a Pakistani in, K in KSA, you want to buy <coughs> a gift for your wife. So this is how we can, we can, you can, you can get, get a loan also in KSA because you're working and have the gift delivered at the door of your house in Pakistan or other, other countries. So I, I can talk, I can, I can tell a lot. There's a lot to say, but it's like, you know, it's it's there is a lot to do. So that's why we keep investing now. We keep innovating. I think that the new the new world of fintech, the new world of payment is becoming amazing. And there's a lot to do. There's a lot a lot of things that we can add on our our platform. Awesome. I want to bring in my partner in crime, Gaurav, into the conversation. Then he's got lots of questions that he wants to dive in deep. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ron. I really appreciate it, Marwan. You know, it's it's always fascinating every time. Um, uh, I listened to you tell the story or the introduction to Yap. You you talk about it, but there's so much happening behind the scenes. And that's what I want to touch upon right now. Because a lot of people who are watching this right now or will hear this later, a lot of what you said sounds very simple, sounds very common, and it sounds very straightforward, right? And I think that's that's an illusion. And I think, you know, what I want to unpack for just a minute, if I can, is the actual depth and effort it takes for something to be accomplished in that fashion. And, and let me tell you what I'm saying about this. How many developers do you have today at Yap? Yeah, first, uh, you know, Gaurav, you're right. You know, and when you use Yap, the user experience, you click, you transfer money. You have your card, virtual card. We provide you an IBAN in, in 30 seconds, then we do the KYC. And you, you feel that it's very easy, but building it is very complicated. Behind it, when you want, when you have a card, there are development tech, there is, like I said, there are five stakeholders, you know, behind it. There's the bank where you have APIs with the bank. Too, too complicated to, to build them because we partner with bank. All the banking services are provided by our partner bank. 
There is also the issue, the, the, the processor, connecting to the processor. All the features that you see in app, it's so much tech development with the processor. There is also YAP team. Uh, YAP team, we have, uh, you asked me the question, today we have working full-time for YAP, we have more than 120 developers. On, on top just of developers, the, 120 yeah, just, developers. Yeah, between, you know, I'm not the, the developers, you know, QA, they like development and they're all tech team working back because the tech is, the, is like you have, you have the, to build the UX, the FSD, develop, uh, code. So there is a lot, lot behind it. But this is what I mean. So, okay, so you have 120 full-time developers and how big is the rest of the team now? The Yap family. So today, today you know, you know, in Yap, like I said, we're acting re regionally. We are regional players. So we have Yap Holding. Yap Holding is we're investing in tech, in marketing, in branding. So we are a team or of around fifty person, and we're building it at scalable platforms for B two C, B two B, scalable. Also, when I say brand, our brand is unified, so we we want to be sure that the brand is known in Pakistan, in Ghana, in Egypt, in KSA as the same brand. So we have a full team branding. Uh, branding and marketing also, we build all our, we create all our videos on Instagram. We're all digital now, Instagram. Uh, all our videos are in-house. I have a full team uh, shooting the videos, uh, the concept behind it. We have amazing videos uh, around that. At the same time, we have local local companies. We have the Yap UE. It's a separate office. Yap KSA, Yap uh, uh, Pakistan. We have teams there. So Yap UE, we have a uh, we employed uh, I think around eighty person. We have Masoud Khan, who is the CEO of Yap UE. He has a team: customer service, operational, uh, compliance, marketing. So a full team, financial everything. And same in now Pakistan. Same in Ghana. Every local entity was going live because we're going live with three companies now. We'll be live in five countries in Q1 2023. Every country has its own full subsidiary, full entity with the CEO with a full team behind it. Right. And when you look at this, right, you look at you have hundreds of people working under the YAP family. Some parts are scalable, and then some are very specific to countries, UAE, KSA, because of regulation, because of compliance, right? So when you're looking at that size of team working with you full time, right? How many of the people that you have in the YAP family are people from the fintech industry? And how many people do you have that are more forward looking, trying to help you really keep on the edge of innovation, trying to question what traditional banking does? Because what I really want to also understand from YAP is how much of what YAP is doing is modernizing traditional banking and how much of it is differentiating given what's happened because there is a fintech revolution that's happening but at the same time the bank has to make money it can't just do something that's attractive yeah. so how much of YAP is foundational banking and how much of it is products and services catered for web3 metaverse you know for yeah, What's yeah. the approach you're thinking from there as a strategy of building product with some developers and such a big team? So, so, so as a team, as a team, we have uh, we have we have a lot of we we have a big team coming from the payment industry. Uh, I mean, I believe fintech is the payment industry. So, uh, as myself, my partner, and a lot of 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 of, of, of the team here and locally coming from, we have a lot of play, uh, people coming from from banking industry. For example, Masood who was ex Rack Bank for. Uh, 18 years he joined us as CEO. We have done the banking. And at the same time, we have marketing, maybe not fintech, marketing more specialized in social media, new players like uh, how, how it because the marketing now is different from the from the marketing all the time. Now it's a really you have skills how they do marketing, how they social media, and you have people coming from customer service. You know, it's a team is like a mixed team. I would say some people coming from payments, some keep people uh, marketing. So it's a mixed team. Now uh how, how how the difference? I will tell you different between us and the traditional bank. So so there are three layers, which is I, I think what we understand what I mean. There's a, there's a, one layer is a banking regulated, uh, all banks, traditional banks regulated, uh, AML compliance, all that, and then the fintechs today they are playing the role where tech. The tech is like the banks have traditional. Uh, the traditional bank have they're stuck with the legacy of of, of tech. Which is they cannot change, they cannot evolve, they cannot. You have to keep innovating, so you have to be up to date tech wise. So we have new platform. We are able to add products uh, a very fast way. In a very fast way, when you have legacy uh, of tech, you're not able to add product because you know tech wise is complicated. So 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 that's why now a bank 
a traditional bank, they can invest in tech. They have to create a new platform. This is two or three years of work. Marketing wise, they have to innovate because the marketing that they do traditional banks is completely different from how we do our marketing. So we are uh, digital banking up at the same time we are traditional. We're not traditional. We're like marketing wise is completely different. Our user acquisition and our cost is that we're digital. So our cost is, is that we don't have branches. So, 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 so we can onboard, activate customers. We can massively have millions of customers in a way and scaling. We don't have to increase our employees. We, it's, it's scalable. It's like we increase slowly, slowly. Why, why we're in bank, you have to have branches. I mean, so it's, it's a new way of working. Uh, and this is a new, 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 new era, new everything. <laughs> so do you think a lot of what's happening with, with YAP is down to timing? Because, I mean, if we look at this region traditionally for the fintech businesses that could be built 10 years ago versus what could be built five years ago, which what could be started one year ago. When you look at regulation, the climate of raising investment, the ability to compete with businesses, uh, talent in the region. I mean, do you think you could have started YAP 10 years ago versus say, you know, four years ago? I, I think there's a time for everything. I wanted to start YAP eight years ago, maybe at the beginning in Africa, but it was so complicated. So in 2018, I started looking, we started building the tech or building the team raising money. In 2020, when we had COVID, I would have said, now I wouldn't start yet in the new year. It's too late for us. So, you know, it's like there is a right time. And same time, building now a FinTech, it's not a deck, you know, it's like now you will see, I think now the markets uh, are crashing. Uh, valuation went massively uh, the last two years without understanding what's what's behind it. What is happening? Like you say, like I say, yeah, I was looking at it, at it, and and we are a big team. We're working day and night. We, we really worked hard to reach where we are to go live. And how many how many independent digital banking app went, went live? You you can count them. I don't know how many how many went live. And even now in KSA, we're going to KSA. We're going live before end of the year. There is a uh, uh, okay, we have uh, in KSA maybe one now. Uh, every kind of, so 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 it's not it's very complicated. It's so many stakeholders or it's regulation, it's tech, it's marketing, it's funding also. You need a lot of funds to reach a break even in our business. Every local entity needs three years to reach a break even. It's part of the process. You need to acquire users, build your revenues. Its revenues are small. You know we're like premium model. Then you add by usage and you have to be transparent. So it's like really, uh, it's becoming much more difficult to do. To, you have to be very big. You have to be regional player to, to, to subsist, uh, to sub, subsist in, in, in the market now. So I believe, Gaurav, to answer you that not a lot of fintechs will survive now what's happening. It's like, uh, you really, you really, the users were getting so small revenues from the users that we need to, to, to build massive, massive uh, user, user. And this is why, it's not only about just having an app, it's about having users, it's about having you, the user using the app, not only just uh, onboarding, uh, using the app, because it's about the product, I'm using it every day, it's about uh, loading. And this is what we're assisting now in UAE. When we started, I think in October or November, we started first when we got uh, the go ahead from Rackbank uh, for the B2C to go ahead start onboarding user. We onboarded more than 130,000 users at date. We're activating every day uh, wow. 400 to 500 users uh, in UAE. So I think we we, had a, we 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 did very well. B2B we started also I think eight months ago. We already onboarded 6,000 SMEs. We're activating every day uh, SMEs and we're moving very fast. Which is this is this is. The aim is to onboard, activate as much as users and to let them be happy to use the app. And this is what banks doesn't do, traditional banks. So I think there is a win-win partnership between banks, traditional banks and fintechs. They have they have their own, their regulated AML compliance, their custodian. And our part is to build the tech, marketing, uh, marketing, uh, user acquisition, and to customer service is very important because it's all digital. You have to be sure that I transfer money or I receive money. Anything can happen to, to have somebody with whom dive to talk in app or to quote them. So before I hand back to, to Ronit, I'm just going to ask one, one more question, specifically to what you were just talking about. When you're doing a digital bank, you're looking at the B2C aspect on one side, and then you're looking at the B2B aspect on one side. Yap started as a B2C, and 
adopted the B2B opportunity and said, you know what, we have to service this as well, because you said this is something we feel is a gap that we need to master and attack. Now, keeping them both separate, right? What I want to understand is how do you design product for each market? Because surely your B2C approach will be different for Saudi. I, that's maybe I'm wrong and you can tell me, but how do you approach the product build for B2B and B2C? And then how do you do it in different countries? Is it, oh, I build X product as vanilla standard product and then I only do different products or I just build one product and everyone will adopt it. So how do you, you know, because you can see, like you said, active users. If I don't have active users, maybe I'm building product that's not correct for those B2B or B2C users. So can you tell us about how you build product and that journey that you've had over the last four years and understanding what a consumer wants or what a business wants from a digital bank? Yeah, yeah. So for the for, for, for the product, so we, we build the same platform, we have the same platform B2C, B2B for all the countries. We are one app, different markets. So it's a one app. B2C, B2B, different market. We localize the KYC. So the product is the same. I'm providing you an IBAN. In UAE, IBAN of Rackback. You don't see Rackback. When I, when I share my, my, my banking uh, banking credential, you see Rackback. In KSA, Bank Al Jazeera. In Pakistan, Faisal Bank. So every country, we're providing for all the IBAN. So the APIs of the bank, this is what the customer doesn't see. Then the product, you, when you have IBAN, you have the transactions, split the bill, analytics. Uh, multi currency, we brought all the same product as a basic product everywhere. For Yap Store, Yap Young, uh, uh, worldwide, you have all kids. Everybody wants to give, give the data. So, people working with you at home also pay them the same. So, we, the, the product as B2C, as B2B is the same. Sometimes we localize, uh, I would say, sometimes we localize for sure the KYC. KYC is different in KSA than UE. UE is the KYC. It's complicated. You need to visit the customer still at day. You need to take his fingerprint. We collect the data, we share them with the bank. In KSA, for example, is the option number, you just you just KYC directly. So we localize the KYC. For sure, we have customer service locally. Our software are global as well as locally, but the product is the same. The product is the same. Marketing-wise, we use the same brand, but we localize, uh, we localize the uh, localize the marketing locally. So as a product, uh, Gorav, yeah, the product is the same. But we, for example, bill payment, we're tying up with different layers. So we're aggregator for bill payment. Tomorrow, like I said, uh, uh, Yap Hub for, uh, for insurance, we're tying up with somebody else. So it depends. We tie up with other fintechs locally to be able to, to, to be able to. Add. But the product is the same. For example, we're, we're adding now uh, in our B2B and we're going to use the BNTL. Uh, B2B now we tied up with, uh, with uh, the lender is EDB. Uh, yeah, the app and the program manager is, is yeah, is yeah, practically and behind the credit scoring uh, for B2C could be credit oh, with another company. So, we tie up with other fintech, we will all pay. We don't want to do everything, but we are acquiring users, the platform are ours, and we're tying up with many, many players that some of them are, are appearing, some, some of them are behind the scene. But as a product, it's the same product, holder. same look and feel. Thanks, Marwan, for sharing that. Run it back to you, my friend. Sure, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Marwan, can we talk a little bit about building digital banks and neo banks generally? Uh, just this week, we had news of one, uh, one digital bank in Australia being shut down. I remember visiting them uh, three, four years ago when they were starting off. <clears throat> uh, the team was, Seemed like a good team. The, the founder, CEO, was a smart guy, enthusiastic. He you know, worked in banking before. He assembled a, a, you know, a lot of smart people. And three, four years later, here we are um, reading about how they're shutting down. And they're not the only one in Australia that's shut down. And we've seen this in other countries as well, where in the UK, some have struggled to get to close to profitability or get client traction. And, how hard is it to build a bank? How hard is it to build a digital bank? This seems like one of the hardest things in fintech to do. Uh, you, know, you know, the last four years, they were spending so much money. The valuation went crazy. You see what's happening in crypto also now. 
<clears throat> so the valuation went massively and fintechs and new startup were spending so much money without thinking mm -hmm. about revenue, without thinking about going break even, mm -hmm. without thinking about where to go. And this is, I'm, I've been saying, I think God of knows where I want to say how, it's crazy what's happening. Uh, I'm coming from a company where we were in the stock market, budget, business plan, revenues, spending, we're like really, uh, so you have a fintech, they just start, they hire, higher, higher, high C-level. They don't know where they're going. They spend so much money and they were thinking that we will keep getting money from the market. It doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. At, at date, yeah, we didn't do our Series A yet. Mm -hmm. We are in five country live. We didn't do our Series A yet. So it's like, you need to really build your budgets, build your KPIs on a daily basis. Be sure about where you're going in revenues. Be sure where you're going, where is the break even. Uh, and the last four years, I would say four years, three years, it was going crazy. And I think now mm -hmm. the market, that's what I'm saying, the market, I think there's no more many, many funds, no more free money. Now the markets, the VCs or the investor will look at the companies who are really have real budget, have real product go to market because a lot of them didn't mm -hmm. go live also. There's a lot of companies who raised 10, 15 million USD on the deck and they didn't go live. So what, what do you do? So going live is very important because it's a mm -hmm. big milestone. When we went live last year, and UAE were the first back independent who went live. Like we're proud to say it because we went live and we're onboarding. Now we're doing revenues, we're growing. It's a proper company. It's not because you are a fintech, you can pay free money. We it's, a, it's behind it, there is a team working on the financial budgeting. Our KPIs are not, not only monthly, we build our KPIs on the yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily. Every day morning we wake up these KPIs. We we're our revenues, our cost, everybody, the cost wise, whether every spend we check it, otherwise you collapse. Sorry, but it's not a very easy. And this is where you say, I'm coming from, from, from a company uh, first, I'm coming from a company, when stock market coming, where they, they do budget revenues, where we're going, where we're reaching, when is the break even? And I'm, I'm really obsessed by that. I think it's not only building a digital bank, just going live and saying, I have a nice, it's about really numbers, 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 and where you're spending mm -hmm. your money. And at the same time, you need to be profitable at certain point. You need to build your revenue. So this is why uh, the market, the valuation, and free money going didn't help a lot of the, the digital bank. And this is what you see now. I believe out of maybe, I don't know, out of 10 fintechs, I will not say 100, uh, one will survive if they will survive. So it is that. Uh, and the survival will be very big players. And this is normal in any new market. You remember the dot-com? I don't know if you remember dot-com. Uh, in 2000, so many companies were there, even on DEX, valuation massively, stock market, mm -hmm. and then who survived? Very strong company. The dot com is here. Uh, crypto is, uh, is blockchain, it's technology. It's going to stay crypto, but only the, the few real players will stay. Digital banks, uh, I will name you a lot, they will be, they will be massive. A lot of the players will be big. Yep, we'll be here. We are well founded, we are organized, we mm -hmm. are a regional player, we, are, we have a good team. We knew what was happening. We didn't go and raise 100 million on the name and or 50 million and spend them. That was every year like this. So again, it's like a cycle. It's a cycle and the cycle is here. Let's see who will stay after the cycle. The cycle mm -hmm. is coming is coming for the next month. It's also very heavy on everybody. So it's normal what's happening. And how long do you think this lasts for? Do you think the last three, four years was the aberration, the outlier, or is in the next few months, the outlier, and then next year we go back to the 2019, 2020, or is that just a period of history we'll look back and say, wow, that was interesting, and unicorns ran around, and rainbows, and, and business logic was suspended, or, or are we in, or is the period now the kind of... We'll survive. <laughs> we'll survive. Life goes on. Ah, then... There are wars, life goes on, you know, it's like, we will survive. How long? I don't know. Nobody knows, but it's mm -hmm. cycle. You know, I think now uh, we are in a bear market now. Uh, people will spend less inflation, like you see, mm -hmm. is, uh, they're not able to control it. Yeah. Uh, in, Fran in France, they're increasing the salaries of 2% and the inflation is 100%. I don't know how much. So uh, it's, it's, uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, it's, uh, Nobody knows when it will, I believe, but we will stay like that now. It's going to be a difficult summer, difficult end of the year. Mm. By next year, the cycle will, will start rising. And, you know, if you have a good business, if you, you know how, what you're building as a company, good players will survive and will grow very strongly after, after the crisis. So you have to be, it's a business. It's about business, how you control yeah. your business. 
we'll all live, we'll all survive the crisis. It's cycle. It's a cycle. But there'll be, you know, in the next year or so, quite a few failures as well, you expect. Quite a few businesses that were built on La La Land Valley, you know, projections that aren't going to make it in your view. Is that a don't scientific so, uh, quote, Ron, at La La Land? Don't, 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 go, don't go so far next year now, actually. You're assisting now to a lot of, uh, I think, yeah, I think that uh, worldwide and yeah. uh, worldwide and the region oh. everywhere, uh, yes, you will have a lot of uh, uh, players who have a close. It's a, it's, a, it's a business very complicated. They're building a digital bank is not easy. It's mm. very complicated. So... Uh, but I guess yeah. a lot of this is cyclical, right, Ronit? Yeah. Your talent moves from one place to another, right? Opportunities are created in different ways. I think instead of partnering with fintechs, maybe people can merge. Lots of M&A happening this year, it seems, as opposed to things just sort of expiring. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's definitely a different, uh, different adoption of how people are looking at company valuations. That correction is happening, but... Let's see. I think Kareem just picked up Munchon. I think there's a whole bunch of other things that are happening behind the scenes at the moment. I don't know what you're seeing, uh, Marwan, on your side also from that position. Yeah, I think I think that you, you know uh, I think that uh, funding will will fund it. It's not only about funding. It's about the business. If you build a company or a tech platform that is. Uh, really well tailor made for the need of the people, of the customers, or it will be acquired, or it will be a company will use it. So yeah, it's like I said, uh, Gora, it's uh, it's part of the part of the game. Huh? It's part we knew that it's coming. I was saying uh, two years ago when it's coming. Uh, uh, it's like like I said, the dot com. You had it, you had little bit companies collapse. It's just normal. And the, the 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 big players or the players, the adequate players will survive and we grow, we grow, we grow, grow very fast. I think we'll move to Q&A now, right, Paul? We've got quite a few questions coming in from the audience. Indeed, uh, many questions already. So um, I think the first question is about fundraising. Uh, you mentioned that fundraising is difficult. What advices uh, would you give and errors to avoid? Uh, <laughs> first, yeah, it's uh, fundraising is... Uh, you know, you have to follow the steps. You have to learn it because I am I am a business guy. I'm more focused on KPIs, building the team. Uh, fundraising is like, you know, you have first, you get... Uh, when I say difficult, you have to know, you have to know at what time you need to raise money. Uh, you should not raise money, more, more money that you need. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, because sometimes you have... You have so much money, you, you will spend them without paying attention. So don't raise so much money and start spending and don't know where you're going. So fundraising is difficult. I cannot answer in, in it's, it's a, you have to be skilled. I learned, <laughs> I learned now for my next, for next venture, I learned how to do fundraising, how to do it properly. Um, I think we did very well in YAP, you know, in RAP we were raising fund i think we never communicated we're just communicating next week the first time how much we raised that date we didn't do our series a yet we're uh, we're we're, uh, we're 200 employees we didn't do our series a and uh, you can't explain it you know it depends on the context you, you know it's it's it depends what you're building because fundraising is not only about fintech it's about uh, uh, startup every startup has its own uh, some startup can go directly profitable some startup needs much more money but uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fundraising is part of, of 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 your business. It's not a small part because you have to be to to have like really before saying okay when I build my company or raise my money. No, it's 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 a, it's not easy. You have to build your deck properly. You have to to prove uh, uh, your CAC, uh, how much you're spending, where are your revenues, where uh, where are your revenues, how much you're spending to acquire customer. How we break even. It's not only about getting users and never getting users. So yeah, fundraising now that the requirements are much, much, much higher than before. And they're gonna be much more complicated than 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 the last year. And uh, you just have to be build your business, focus on your business, on your product, on your budget, on your business plan. And then if you're a valuable company, you'll get you'll get the money. You have to be confident of your business and you get your money. Thank you. That is that's very interesting. 
Um, the next question is about competition. Uh, how much competition is there today? Uh, and uh, can we expect more in the coming years from other digital banks and fintech? Uh, today, uh, uh, like uh, in YAP, we're acting regionally. So every, I, I think that as a regional player in our region, we don't have a competitor. We're the only one acting in the region. We're going to be live in five countries in uh, in Q1 2023. We're already practically live now in three countries. KSA will be live before end of the year. So as a, as a regional player, I don't see any competition. As a local player, as a local, because for sure we act locally. In UAE, I don't know who's my competition. <laughs> uh, I don't think that any digital banking app coming a product from a bank is our competition. I think that only pure player like us is a competition like uh, like uh, like other. Why I say pure player? Because, you know, if you are a product of the bank, you're still a bank. You know, you're still a digital <laughs> banking app out of the bank. So I believe that uh, some competition will do, should be live soon in UAE, hopefully, to have some competitor. Only pure player digital banking app. It's about the brand also. Yep, it's not only the product because now we're adding so many products. We, we answer, it's also about the brand. I'm happy to have you. I'm proud to have you. Yeah, the branding is very important. At the same time, uh, it's 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 one app where I, I can I can I can do a lot of it. So I'm happy where we reach today. We worked a lot to reach where we are today. We work a lot to, to stabilize having a really uh, now an app where I'm using it every day. I'm happy. I have a bank account, but I'm using the app. I'm using the app. And now we're adding soon a loyalty program. The loyalty program is not based on a credit card. It's based on anything you do in the app. The loyalty program will provide a token. Uh, token to anything you do in app and this token you can trade it to start educating people on digital assets uh, so so to go back to your to your question i think that uh, in ksa we might have uh, there are competition wallets maybe uh, maybe in ghana today there's there are wallets uh, there's no digital banking app that's why we chose our countries we're going to pakistan because i didn't go to india we're going to pakistan because india is a very competitive market egypt we went there because it's massive population. There is a lot of need, and there is no one, uh, not yet one player. UAE was supposed to be the most complicated market, the most competitive market, and I was happy to launch my B2C here because I said it's the most complicated market. But apparently now, after we launch, I don't see any new player coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just jump in before Paul asks the next question? Marwan, can you take that last? <laughs> I can put you on the spot. The last comment and expand. Where, where are all these? I don't know. I, I mean, to... our friends are running around with big pockets, and the consultants are running around. What happened to all these neo banks? All of uh, Garo's friends. Where are they? Hey, 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 no. I think Gora Go, 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 Go should answer us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get into so much trouble. <laughs> you know, like, I, I they have big pockets, right? Where are they? Oh, man. I, you know, it's, I mean, if I answer this question, it's trouble. So I'll let Marwan expl explain <laughs> things from his side. I, I, I don't have an answer. I, I think I, the only thing I can say that... Uh, UAE for us was the pilot, was practically test, was a very competitive market, was like really population 9, 10 million. And we said, we want to start in UAE because we want to, we want to be in the very competitive market because it, it will allow us to really innovate, add product. When you go to market like Pakistan, like Ghana, it's, it's our product is really mature. Enough. So I was surprised that at date, I didn't see independent digital banking app launch already. I didn't see. So I, I, I get that. The thing that we did, the strategy that we took, uh, we took, and there was a strategy. We said we partner with bank. I am partner with bank, and today the, 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 we we built the tech. We provide the user experience. We provide the uh, so so and let the bank do their job. That's why we partner with bank. That the banks are custodian. It's a bank. I trust the bank. It's a custodian. Uh, they're regulated under the central bank AML everything. So we're getting regulated as a retail, as a PSP, as a EMI. In Pakistan, we have EMI. In UAE, we have we have retail license. We're not the FSA regulated. We are regulated under central bank practically. In KSA, now we're getting uh, from Sama EMI license. So I guess that that the, the some players maybe they want to do the full fledged. And I don't know if it's a good strategy. I cannot. I cannot describe. What I, all I see that they're not live yet. I think that uh, when I mentioned, uh, you, you told me to mention uh, 
Revolut, M26, or Shine. Those players, they started like us. They started by with partner with banks. They were providing the, the Ivanov Bank. They built the tech, they built product, they acquired users, and they moved to become fully regulated by some of the fully big player. We might do that one day in some countries. We might not do, I don't know. Now we're focusing on what we know what to do. User experience, tech, product, and marketing, and branding. I mm -hmm. hope I answered your question, Ron, but I don't have an answer to that question because I don't know what <laughs> other players are doing. <laughs> I can answer about no, no. ourselves and what's happening. That's true, that's true. Um, so uh, there is an interesting question because you talked a lot uh, during this discussion. Uh, someone wanted to know how many YAP users uh, there is as of today. But I don't know if it's the right metrics actually that you're following. So maybe tell us about the milestone in terms of user. But maybe tell us that it's not the actual metrics that you're following, what you also said. Yeah, yeah. So actually, in in uh, in, uh, in UAE, we're ahead of our schedule. So in UAE, our budget was to activate 100,000, 98,000 users B2C at, uh, before end of this year, the, the 98 before end of this year in 2022. So we onboarded 130,000 users. We activated that date around. 52,000 users at date uh, we activated. We're activating every, every day. Every day now we reach 450 users activating. So I think we're going to reach uh, above our target uh, in B2C. We're aiming now to do to activate 150,000 users. When I say onboarded activated in UE, in UE the, 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 the KYC is more, is more complicated than other countries. Now I said in UE, uh, you know, it depends on nationality. We have when we activate the users, it, we have to follow the the full process of our banking partner or the regulation of central bank. So now we learned how to activate much faster. No, so out of onboarding, we're we're activating thirty five percent. Now we're reaching sixty five percent. We're aiming to reach eighty five percent the next quarter. So uh, this are the metrics. As B two B, we onboarded six thousand. I did. I was checking. I was surprised. Six thousand SMEs. We activated more than two thousand SMEs, uh, which is very, very. It's much faster than we expected. Thank you. And actually, coming uh, on the B two C and B two B angle, uh, someone in the audience wanted to know if there is uh, what will be uh, you know the trade off uh, by focusing on B two B or focusing on B two C. And I think that the platforms, the tech-wise, our platforms now became B2C, B2B. In a way, as a user or as a customer, I'm onboarding the tech-wise is very important, B2C. I'll allocate you IBAN in UE from Rackbank in B2C, uh, EDB if it's a B2B. Same in, 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 in Pakistan, we have two banks now we allocate. There. Now the products, you know, you have cards, debit card for B2B, analytics, multi currency for B2B, B2C. Then you have YAP store, you have YAP Young, YAP Household. In the B2B, we're building YAP payroll, YAP expense, which is, uh, this is more what the B2B needs. We're building invoice management, we're building all. So it depends, it depends. These are more, it's more about platform or products that we're building specific on the users. Thank you. Um, there is a last question uh, uh, that is about uh, how much money goes into capital requirements for a digital bank? It uh, depends, you know, you can, it, it depends if you're, if you're, if you're launching a digital bank uh, as one country, or for example, we would have said we're launching only in UAE and focus on UAE. Today, us, we have capital requirement for the holding because the holding is building a tax, a scalable tech. If you're building an app for one market, it's, completely, it's, it's, it's much easier than building an app for 10 markets. If you're building, uh, if you're buying a software also for one market, we buy, for example, now in data, we were buying so many software, Snowflake, and many, many software for many markets. So it depends about your strategy. Our, we're, we're unique because we are in many markets. Every market is regulated differently. Every market has different language, maybe. Every market has different different color people also. So we're in many markets where we're operating locally, but in the same time, our tech, our software is so on. So it, it depends. You have to build your business plan, your deck, and see how much you need. Capital depends on your strategy. We're um, coming to the end of the hour, Marwan. So uh, maybe Gaurav and I should wrap up and. Uh... Maybe one final question, if I can ask you to get your crystal ball out, Marwan. Uh, it's 2025, we're having this session again. What does the world look like? What does YAP look like, 2025? 
for, I think that fintechs and uh, what is fintech? Fintech is today payment, is digital banking is like uh, uh, getting getting loans instantly, which is things that we didn't have before because the tech was not here. You know, because when you give a loan, you have to have you have to have the the the, the analytics. You have to have all the requirements that the bank we, we we couldn't do them because the tech was not able to do it. Now we're very fast. So I think that the world is moving fast. I think that the way we bank, the way we pay, the way we transfer money, like see, is like, well, would you imagine that you on board, you, you can transfer money to UK instantly today in, in Yap, you go and transfer, you, you get transfer. I didn't believe, I, I, I don't think now you can transfer money, so you can get a loan instantly, instantly also. So things are moving very, very fast. I think that the FinTech industry have 10 years now to more keep, keep continuing innovating keep development because we have a lot of countries also that don't have access to that. Where I see up in 2025, actually 2025 is a bit far. I like, I like 2020, 2024, but I will tell you that I see up first uh, in more than more than eight or nine countries. I think I, I, I see 2025 will be in 10 countries. 2023 will be in five countries. Uh, we will have millions of users. We'll have amazing product, product, amazing app where you can, you can, Download up, get activated, trade equities, uh, store your NFTs, uh, get a loan instantly, and then same time B two B. I see. So I think we're we're going we're going uh, we're going to be amazing. It's not because 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 of the team, because of the brand we did, because of all the effort that we did. Uh, that so I see I see us really one of the biggest players in the region. Mawan, thank you so much, and look forward to watching this uh, next few years unfold for you guys.